Today's reading begins in Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Now, Israel, listen to the statutes and to the ordinances which I teach you, to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, for the Lord your God has destroyed all the men who followed Baal Peor from amongst you. But you who were faithful to the Lord your God are all alive today. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances, even as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you should do so in the middle of the land where you go in to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who shall hear all these statutes, and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to them as the Lord our God is, whenever we call on him? What great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law, which I set before you today? Only be careful, and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes saw, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. But make them known to your children, and your children's children, the day that you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people to me, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. You came near and stood under the mountain. The mountain burned with fire to the heart of the sky, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. The Lord spoke to you out of the middle of the fire. You heard the voice of words, but you saw no form. You only heard a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments. He wrote them on two stone tablets. The Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances, that you might do them in the land where you go over to possess it. Be very careful, for you saw no kind of form on the day that the Lord spoke to you in Horeb, out of the middle of the fire, lest you corrupt yourselves and make yourself a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth, and lest you lift up your eyes to the sky, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the army of the sky, you are drawn away and worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has allotted to all the peoples under the whole sky. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be to him a people of inheritance, as it is today. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swore that I should not go over the Jordan, that I should not go into that good land which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance, but I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan, but you shall go over and possess that good land. Be careful, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a devouring fire, a jealous God. When you father children and children's children, and you have been long in the land, and then corrupt yourselves, and make a carved image in the form of anything, and do that which is evil in the Lord your God's sight, to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that you will soon utterly perish from off the land which you go over the Jordan to possess it. You will not prolong your days on it, but will utterly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you amongst the peoples, and you will be left few in number amongst the nations where the Lord will lead you away. There you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there you shall seek the Lord your God, and you will find him when you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in oppression and all these things have come on you, in the latter days you shall return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not fail you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that God created man on the earth, and from the one end of the sky to the other, whether there has been anything as great as this thing is, or has been heard like it. 
Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the middle of the fire, as you have heard, and live? Or has God tried to go and make a nation for himself from amongst another nation, by trials, by signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? It was shown to you so that you might know that the Lord is God. There is no one else besides him. Out of heaven he made you to hear his voice, that he might instruct you. On earth he made you to see his great fire, and you heard his words out of the middle of the fire. Because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their offspring after them, and brought you out with his presence, with his great power, out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before you, greater and mightier than you, to bring you in, to give you their land for an inheritance, as it is today. Know therefore today, and take it to heart, that the Lord himself is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no one else. You shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God gives you for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise, that the manslayer might flee there, who kills his neighbor unintentionally, and didn't hate him in time past, and that fleeing to one of these cities he might live. Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain country for the Reubenites, and Ramath in Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan for the Manassites. This is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies, and the statutes, and the ordinances which Moses spoke to the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, beyond the Jordan, in the valley opposite Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel struck when they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise, from Aror, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, even to Mount Zion, also called Hermon, and all the Arabah beyond the Jordan eastward, even to the Sea of the Arabah, under the slopes of Pisgah. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, beginning in verse 39. He, that is Jesus, spoke a parable to them. Can the blind guide the blind? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how can you tell your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck of chaff that is in your eye, when you yourself don't see the beam that is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First remove the beam from your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For people don't gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings out that which is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings out that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things which I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug and went deep, and laid a foundation on the rock. When a flood arose, the stream broke against that house, and could not shake it, because it was founded on the rock. But he who hears and doesn't do is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream broke, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. After he had finished speaking in the hearing of the people, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion servant, who was dear to him, was sick and at the point of death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and save his servant. When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, He is worthy for you to do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he built our synagogue for us. Jesus went with them. When he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Therefore I didn't even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having under myself soldiers. I tell this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned, and said to the multitude who followed him, 
I tell you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. Those who were sent, returning to the house, found that the servant who had been sick was well. Psalm 68, beginning in verse 1. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let them who hate him also flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds, to the Lord his name. Rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a defender of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God sets the lonely in families. He brings out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious dwell in a sun-scorched land. God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth trembled, the sky also poured down rain at the presence of the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You, God, sent a plentiful rain. You confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation lived therein. You, God, prepared your goodness for the poor. The Lord announced the word. The ones who proclaim it are a great company. Kings of armies flee. They flee. She who waits at home divides the plunder, while you sleep amongst the campfires. The wings of a dove, sheathed with silver, her feathers with shining gold. When the Almighty scatters kings in her, it snowed on Zalman. The mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains. The mountains of Bashan are rugged. Why do you look in envy, you rugged mountains, at the mountain where God chooses to reign? Yes, the Lord will dwell there forever. The chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands of thousands. The Lord is amongst them, from Sinai, into the sanctuary. You have ascended on high. You have led away captives. You have received gifts amongst people. Yes, amongst the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell there. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous shall flourish as the green leaf. Mm -hmm.